I just thought I'd talk a bit about a, a new toy I've got. I got them from eBay quite cheaply. And it's an internal set of Paul McCoyton. Say why, which is, works a little strangely. I'm going to go through how a normal Paul McCoyton works. Take this one here. This is another one. Another one. I've, I've developed a bit of an, a bit of a obsession with bore micrometers. So in this case, you, you wind it all the way back, put it in the hole, and tighten it up until it clicks, and then you can read off the size. And this is a setting gauge, and this is 0 0.70049 inches. So this is actually calibrated to the Hundredth of a thousandth is the name for those. That's how those work. Whilst the other boring head has a range of 0.1 inches, this one has a. With this one, you put in a one of the heads and one of the pins, and get a range of approximately three and a half thou, I think. I'll look at that. So anyway, it came, it was cheaper than you'd expect because there was a pin 9 is missing and furthermore pin 9 is the one you need for the calibration hole, the calibration piece. So the calibration here is 0.375 and looking at the, looking at the list, 0.375 is the size you do with pin number 9. However, looking carefully at it, I spotted something. Pin 9 is there, it was just face down in a hole. So in fact the, the, the set is in fact complete. Except for the little spanners. There's one big spanner, there's one little spanner here, and some of the little spanners here, which are missing. Um, and they're the ones you need to tighten the pins into this extension rod and into the body. So I made some. They are quite tiny. So the calibration block, so the calibration block is sized not as true as it could be, it's a bit corroded on the writing, but it says 0.375 plus point, 0.375 plus three hundred thousandths of an inch. So to, to, to check the calibrate, to, to, to check it, and this is what this is why I make it this because this this works a little straight a little differently to most to most of them. So if we assemble 0.375 needs actually it's pin zero and 0.375. So that's that one. So I'll do it with a pin first, pin zero. Just nipped up slightly. An extension bit then. That. 0.375. Get the hole. And much to my surprise, it doesn't go in. 
So pack it all the way off like it would normally. And it still doesn't go in. And it turns out these work differently. What you have to do is pull this collar back, then put it in, then let it out, and the pins are sprung out. And then you tighten down the thing. And it goes hard, it has to stop. So I don't know what's different in there to come back to a normal one. But that is reading. Like 375. What is not reading? Was it reading? So that is reading 5. So it's reading. Can you see that? Yeah, focus. I don't want to focus. That's reading 5 units, which is 500 thousandths over the size. So it's nearly right. Should read 3, not 5. And to, to calibrate it, you have to undo, loosen, these two, loosen those two screws, and you can twist it to make it exactly right. So, to make the spanners, I have super glued a strip of steel gauge plate, or ground flat stock, to a sacrificial piece of aluminium. I think this was a 2.5mm cutter, running at 11,000 RPM. I have the high speed spindle mounted for this job. Bother, said Pew. After a change of tool, the job was completed, and here we see me uh, releasing the super glue using a blowtorch. Spanners were then given a fettling with various abrasives and diamonds and things. And then they were emblackened in some cold brewing solution.
you can start watching now, nothing really else happens. <laughs>